Just because something is FDA approved does not necessarily mean it's safe or effective. The perfect example of this was a drug called Aduhelm, which was approved in 2021 by the FDA for Alzheimer's dementia. Now, there's a full investigation that you can read about, but the gist of it was that there was regulatory capture in that there was influence of the people who are supposed to oversee the approval process by the industry that is trying to get the approval. And this happens all the time with pharmaceutical companies and can even happen with biotech companies if they know the right people. Now, eventually the drug was removed off the market, but if you look at it, 10 out of the 11 people on the FDA who approved this drug, it really begs the question, why did they vote yes for it? Now, this can go the other way as well. Just because a drug is not FDA approved or a therapy is not FDA approved, it doesn't mean that it's not safe or effective. And of course, allogeneic stem cells is a perfect example. This is now allowed in Florida as the new law, but it's not FDA approved. What this means is the treatment is still considered experimental because it hasn't gone through that long regulatory process. But again, there are surgeries such as meniscus surgery for degenerative meniscus tears that don't have really good research outcomes, but are still offered and covered by insurance. So the word experimental is a label that's just really to denote if it's gone through that long regulatory process, not necessarily to denote safety or efficacy, because again, these cells have been used in other places of the world for many years, and they have a lot of data backing up their safety, and we need more studies to do and establish efficacy. But that's the whole point of having this real world evidence and ongoing clinical trials, so we can have that evidence now, I know everyone likes to use FDA approved as a strategy to get people to feel more comfortable. There are many things that make you question how effective really is the FDA because things like artificial dyes and other substances that are found in our food are not found elsewhere in Europe or other parts of the world. So it makes you wonder, are they really doing what they can to protect everyone? Now, I'm not saying that the FDA is not important. Of course, we need regulation, but I think it just needs to be restructured in a more intelligent way where we can allow these therapies that we know have established safety, get them to patients and then do what's called post-market surveillance. This is what Japan does and to me it makes a lot of sense. After you've done a phase one trial that has shown safety, allow people to have access to these therapies that can change your life and then monitor for efficacy afterwards and for ongoing side effects. I think this is the most logical solution for regenerative medicine where you don't have necessarily the big pharmaceutical companies that can spend a hundred million dollars on large clinical trials and so you really have to take this more hybrid approach that can allow these therapies to eventually get the approval that they need from the regulatory bodies.